we want to talk about diagnosis and the personal protection. First of all, the diagnosis, and uh, we all know about that the, this virus uh, very well. Here's the, the cases of all in USA, I just mentioned by other people. And uh, New York is the first one. And I also concern about uh, the Ohio because I stayed in Cincinnati for one year. And uh, also Ohio is different from New York City because the there's a low, so many, uh, uh, the population is less than New York. So it's different. So we concern about it. Uh, to the pathology, uh, it's the inflammation and the mucus we should pay attention to because we should treat the inflammation. Also, sometimes we should treat the mucus in the lung. And uh, as to the history of epidemiology, uh, as mentioned by Professor Zhong, it's uh, one to 14 days. And uh, also some family members, colleagues and uh, friends uh, have the same symptoms and so it's clustering disease and the uh, fever and dry cough and the fatigue is a very very common and uh, from my experience lost uh, congestion running nose and the sort of the throat is not so common sometimes the, the patient has uh, diarrhea this diarrhea may be due to the infection of the virus Sometimes maybe just use uh, due to the medicine, for example, Abidor can cause uh, diarrhea. In severe cases, dyspnea is very common uh, after the one week of the onset of this disease. And in some cases that can rapidly progress into IRDS and uh, we should pay attention to it. Some Children are relieved very quickly, and uh, the middle patients only show the low fever and uh, uh, some the symptoms are not so obvious. We also use the electronic stethoscope device to listen to the lung. Uh, doctors have maybe uh, uh, said that why you use the electronic stethoscope because we put on the uh, protection shoes, we can use the, cannot use the regular step scope. We can see here that there's a wheels and also crackers. Also, we can find the micro cracks just uh, uh, in the basal of the lung. And most of them located in the basal of the lung. And the, as to the laboratory test, the blood routine exam, examination said that the neutral fine is almost normal and uh, sometimes decreased over the lymphocyte. And the CRP and the dimer may be increased and uh, as the lymphocytes decrease progressively as to uh, um, when the disease progressed. And we can take the various the the specimen we uh, we can collect the specimen for samples from throat swab, uh, also gel swab, and also anal swab. And uh, the uh, at the sputum can has the higher uh, positive situation than other. And uh, we should test the samples within four hours. If you cannot uh, test the samples with, within four hours, you should preserve it in the four degrees. And if you want to test it in the later time, you should preserve it in the lower uh, uh, condition. And we use the RT-PCR and also NGS to test the virus. And we also have some uh, experience about the test. We use the nostril swamps and also pharyngeal swam collect the sample at the same time. You can see here we have a 100 
patients. Um, we collect the samples uh, at the same time. We can see here that the losses swabs has higher positive ratio than the pharyngeal swabs. It's only high, uh, uh, 50%. When you use the pharyngeal swab, you can you have to face to face to the patient. Uh, so the, the patient burst out the air just uh, direct to you. But if you use the lesser uh, swamp, you can stand just beside your patient. So it's, I think it's safer than very gel uh, swamp. As to the IgM and the IgG, Professor Zhong told about, uh, talk about this one, this. And uh, as to the uh, CT scan, uh, there's a small patch in the early stage and then develop, developed into the GGO. And uh, after that, maybe consol consolidation. And then uh, when the patient uh, get better, maybe uh, the GGO appeared again and the subpleural line is very obvious. And as to the diagnosis, the, we should ask the history of the patient and also clinic symptoms. Uh, we should exclude other various pneumonia and other pathogens. When the suspect cases uh, um, confirmed with the virus detection or some IgM, IgG positive, we can make a confirmation diagnosis. Someone may be asked which one is the better one, CT or nucleic acid. At first, the nucleic acid is, uh, took a longer time, just uh, as someone mentioned before. It's maybe four or three days in Wuhan, but improved later. And uh, in patients, if the patient is not diagnosed in time, then the patient cannot be separated and classified in the in time. After the inpatient is better, uh, beds are occupied due to not able to examine in time, because uh, if we should test two times for elective. When, before the patient can be discharged from the hospital. And in the late period, nuclear acid testing for selective problems, maybe due to the specimen collection and uh, preservation and also transportation and uh, some processing, processing and uh, detection technology and the reagent also equipment can affect the result of the test. So as um, CT has high sensibility, but lower specificity. So we should use uh, cleaning and uh, laboratory tests and image put together to make diagnosis. If you uh, don't have timely test for the virus, I think clinical and the image is very important. You can also make a diagnosis and uh, uh, treat the patient and isolate the patient at the same time. As to the classification, uh, we classification the patient into middle, common, and severe, and a very critical uh, condition. And uh, some maybe some patient can progress in very severe uh, uh, condition. Uh, for example, the lymphocyte decrease very quickly and also L6 CRP increased significantly. Also lactic acid progressively in, uh, increased. If the CT uh, lesions progress very rapidly in a short time, for example, within three or five days, it's maybe uh, worse. The patient condition may be worse. Uh, some factors can uh, predict the patient may be progressing in the critical uh, condition. For example, age, if the patient older than 65, 
uh, obesity, the overweight, if the patient uh, BMI greater than 28. Also, the patient had uh, chronic disease such as COPD, IPF, CTD, ARD, uh, uh, chronic heavy smoking, also hypertension, also some uh, nervous system disease, and also CKD. This kind of patient, maybe you should pay attention to them and maybe progress in critical condition. The differentiation diagnosis, we should uh, exclude some other uh, uh, pathogens, especially the influenza virus. We should pay attention to them. Also, we should uh, exclude the other disease. For example, the organizing pneumonia. Sometimes maybe secondary organizing pneumonia is uh, can be found in the uh, COVID-19 patient. So lower coronavirus is still a challenge for us. Uh, in the clinic practice, for example, sometimes clinic symptoms apparent but nuclear acid is the uh, negative. Some CT uh, changes the obvious nuclear acid is still negative. Sometimes the patient uh, have, uh, does not have a clinic symptom, but the nuclear acid is positive. Sometimes clinic symptom disappeared, CT lesions completely resolved, nuclear acid is still positive. I want to share some cases with you. Uh, this, this one is a female, uh, 42 years old, and uh, she was uh, admitted to a hospital for fever and cough for more than 10 days. X-ray is uh, normal, so X-ray is not uh, work in the COVID-19. In January 6, the CT scan can see here the small pitch, the small uh, some uh, lesions and sometimes some and uh, uh, consolidation. Most of them located on the rear. and uh, the patient has fever and dyspnea. Uh, Four days later, the ground uh, GGO appeared in the CT and the patient as uh, the dyspnea and uh, fever uh, progressed and uh, peaked. 10 days later, the patient felt better and uh, the ground gas uh, opacity improved. And uh, we can see here reverse halo sign here and here. The indicate that the patient improved. I also want to share one uh, the other patient, the 37 years old uh, man. He is a doctor in the Red Cross Hospital in Wuhan, fever for four days. You can see here, the it's almost normal here. And uh, maybe five days later, the, there's a lesion in middle lobe right middle lobe here. And uh, after treatment disappeared, all the uh, lesions almost disappeared in um, almost uh, two weeks. And uh, you can see here the consolidation here and uh, the GGO here and uh, after treatment uh, resolved. Uh, it's almost the same. The blood test is almost uh, normal, just the uh, lymph size decreased in uh, February 25th. And uh, the liver function just because I think it's maybe just because of the uh, medicine we used and we stop some medicine and improve. And uh, the uh, antigen for respiratory tract pathogens, uh, the influenza A and B is negative and the uh, other, we also have blood culture, it's negative. You can see here, it's uh, temperature is very high. 
and uh, we test the nuclear acid. All of them, uh, and from different sides of the body, it's uh, all negative. IgM from uh, very weak, positive to positive, and the IgG is still negative and before discharge from the hospital. Uh, we stopped all the uh, antibiotic and the treat just with the injection of the interferon. And uh, after that, the fever resolved and the patient discharged from the hospital. And also this is of uh, 22 years old uh, female, fever for two days. And we can see here GGO in the fir uh, February 1st and uh, the positive of the nuclear acid. And uh, after that, the lesion improved and uh, resolved. Uh, after the treatment, but still the nuclear acid is still positive for a longer time. It's very common in patients with diabetes and the nuclear acid remain positive for a longer time. For example, maybe uh, one month or 40 days. As to personal protection, uh, because we, the virus can transmit from from uh, droplets and also contact and or so so we use the personal protect equipment for uh, respiratory protection and also face shield and also uh, protect the shoes and uh, gloves and uh, sometimes we use the uh, uh, boats it's a standard protection and uh, enhanced uh, protection and also additional protection. If you pro uh, perform bronchoscopy, just like this one, we perform bronchoscopy, the positive pressure heat cover should be applied. When you perform the spilled aspiration, also the sampling of bronchoscopy, intubation, and this kind of procedures. Uh, when uh, we should put on caps first and then test the, uh, put on the mask uh, and 95, uh, 95 five masks and you should test the mask if, um, and also put on the, uh, check the protective clothing and uh, put on them and uh, wearing gloves and put on, wear outer protective clothing and uh, also outer gloves and uh, put on the face shield and uh, sometimes the shoot uh, the, the, the boots and uh, check them uh, check again and uh, it's uh, what uh, what I like the look like in work when I work in the world in the, the consulting the patients and when you talk of the protect shoes, you should take off, remove the uh, face shield first and uh, take off uh, outer, uh, outer clothes and then inner clothes and uh, also the masks and then the cap. Uh, never touch yourself before you wash your hands. It's very important. Hand hygiene is very important because the virus can uh, the transmission from the uh, contact. So wash your hand with running water is very important. So only protect yourself and then, then you can help more people. We, the, um, we have 42 staffs, for, uh, nurses and uh, doctors from other province to Wuhan, uh, to Hebei, uh, province, as a report from the government, no one uh, tested positive for the uh, COVID-19 in these uh, nurses and uh, doctors. In gen January 25th, we have 20 uh, nurses and uh, doctors from Chengdu and uh, uh, almost two months later, we returned from Wuhan to Chengdu and uh, we test the, the nuclear acid, all of us have the elective test. So it's very 
important to protect yourself with the proper personal protective equipment. That's all what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Professor Law, and thank you all the speakers for excellent timekeeping.